mom and pop places general motors factories i had some we, they, that was big in dayton back at that time we had all the gm plants so i serviced some of those so i did that to about 1977 and then the owner of the company asked me said you ever thought about management i said no i said never really give a second thought i just kind of like doing what i do so I got a promotion to uh, be a branch manor, manager in Richmond, Indiana. And I did that for about a year, and then I come back and I took over the Dayton branch at that time, which is a much bigger branch. Richmond was just a, a part of that company called Rogers Pest Control. So when I come back, I run that for a couple years, and then about 1989, waste management bought this company now waste management is a trash company but they wanted to get into the pest control industry so they bought the company and we all had to take all these psychological profile tests to see where your strengths were so when they took us over I didn't realize, but my manager that I worked for, which trained me about everything I knew in the industry, wonderful gentleman, still stay in contact with him to today. He lost his job, which I didn't know. I thought he just left. Well, they gave me his job. And they made me a sales, as a sales manager. And I had done some sales through my pest control industry, got pretty good at it. But they come up one day and said, well, there's one thing you're really good at and there's something else that you've done in the past that you're not very good at. And they says, you just blew away the sales aptitude test, so you're gonna be a sales manager, but you'll never be a branch manager for us. I thought that was kind of odd, but. I thought I did okay, but not to their liking. So they said, well, you got to go to Livonia, Michigan to pick up your company car, brand new car. Well, fairly new. And then uh, here's an American Express card. And they say, you're no longer selling residential work. You're going to sell commercial work. And I don't care what you put on this credit card, but I want you entertaining clients take them to dinner or whatever. Well, I wasn't used to all that stuff, but I started doing it. Started networking and got to know a lot of people and uh, did pretty well doing that. And then a year later, Terminex comes in and buys waste management. So waste management, I guess, got in over their head. They didn't know about bugs. So Terminex came in and um, the year 2000 and um, of course everybody was grandfathered into their system so they had to keep paying me what I was making when waste management gave me a 50% raise and tripled my benefits when they bought us and then Terminex I uh, had a lot of good benefits but they had to grandfather my salary I think it was for two years so I didn't lose any money when Terminex came in. But Terminex at the time was really heavily into uh, residential work. They had commercial accounts, but their niche was uh, residential. So um, there was probably, probably 13 to 15 salespeople in the sales room and I did very well at that actually I I give God the glory for all of this he gave me the gift of the talents of the sales so I don't want to sound pride for a haughty because I I don't I give him the glory but I was able to uh, go on several um, 
sales trips. You sell so much business and you go on these superstar trips across the country and across the world, actually. I've been to Hawaii and Cancun and three times, been to Bermuda, just different places. My wife was able to go and my son went on a couple of them. But I made great money. I was making, back then, I was making, uh, this early 90s, I guess it was, I was making 90,000 a year, pretty much every year, just selling business. So I, I was very good at it. But I did that for about seven, eight years, and it was getting to a point where the company wanted us to really, I wouldn't say sell in the gray area, but that's what it felt like to me. And I couldn't do that, not as a Christian. It's black and white. There is no gray area when you're selling business. The customer either needs it or they don't need it. But they want us to sell next door neighbors, need to treat your house for termites because the house that we are treating, they say, well, you gotta go to the neighbors and sell them too. And pretty much scare them that you're gonna get termites if you don't treat. Well, I didn't like that. So about the end of 2002, early 2003, well, I'd, I'd say about six months before that to a year, I actually prayed to God to close that door. I wasn't happy anymore. I was becoming haughty, prideful, thought I was a cat's meow, and I wasn't. So I asked him to close that door. Well, six months later, I have back surgery. So the day I go back to work after my short-term disability, they terminated my employment. They said you wasn't crossing your T's, dotting your I's, but they did this nationwide to all the veterans. I mean, I was 53 years old at the time, I think in 2003. So I left that job and I remember driving home and called my wife and said, you know, I just got exterminated from Terminex. Well, I said, I did pray about that about a year ago. And she says, well, I sure didn't pray about it. So, you know, it was, it was a little bit tough, and, but we had, our finances were in good shape. Our home was paid for at the time. We had a 401 I was able to roll over from Terminex. And so, had to start a new chapter in my life. So about 2003, Heading in 2004, I decided to start my own pest control company. So I just went out, started knocking on doors, mostly commercial accounts, because I knew I had to build my base through the commercial sector. Small grocery store, restaurants, mom and pop stuff. So I built a base by doing that. Then I had a website built, guy out of New York, and uh, I did very well, I mean, once the website, the websites were just really coming in back then really strong. And then I um, built a lot of business, um, hired my oldest son at the time, come to work for me, he wanted to try it out. It didn't work out for him, he worked uh, five or six years, I believe, with me, it just didn't work out. I turned the company over to him and it just didn't work so I took some of it back and started to build but the business a little bit. Well, it was becoming bigger than me. I mean, you know, I'm getting older, I'm focused, I'm such a focused person on growth that I reinvested pretty much everything I ever made the company went back into the business. So. I did that for a while and then, and I took on some advertising through Home Advisor, uh, which is now Angie's. I sold a, a ton of business off Home Advisor. You pay for every lead, but it's a hate and love relationship. I think one year I spent $16,000 in lead fees and sold almost $180,000 in new business. So I seen at that point that this is where I needed to be got a real strong reputation through Home Advisor, so. And we're a small company out of the Dayton area. And 
I think uh, it was back in 2020, I finally decided to retire. I actually retired three or four times and went back to work. But this time it was for real. And how all that kind of happened. is I was um, doing a termite job one day down around Cincinnati area and we was drilling holes in the ground and you know did a partial drilling of the garage to stop the termites and it was a really hot day I remember I was by myself and it was probably 90 degrees outside well I noticed that I got really faint and uh, I knew I had overheated if I wasn't careful, I was going to have heat stroke. So I got in my truck and started cooling down and stuff and never thought anything about it. <clears throat> well, a couple months later, I went to the doctor for my regular physical and they do the EKG and all that good stuff. And he uh, asked me, he says, have you any had any shortness of breath or any pain, chest pains? I go, nope. I said, everything's everything was fine so he said well it looks like there's some damage to the back of your heart now I don't know if that's related to that issue I had on that job I don't know but he said that um, I want to send you to a cardiologist to get some further tests and see what's going on with your heart so I did all that and 